Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the ESI Digest. I am Tom Daniels, the sub-editor of Esports Inside, and we're going to run through the biggest esports business-related news stories of the year. Yeah, we've had a little bit of hiatus. This is the first episode of 2021. Hopefully, I don't say 2020 too much, but I'm still in that phase. We've got four big stories for you coming in this episode. So right now, we're going to be talking about the LCKs rebranding and a lot of other rebrandings as well. We're going to be uh, t touching on those as well. One of which is Dignitas' is rebranding, but we're also going to be talking about their partnership with banking platform Saitara as well. Then we've got BBC Sport announcing that they will be broadcasting the Rocket League Champion Series X, which is a very, very interesting story, and I'd love to talk a bit more about that later on in the episode. And then we've also, finally, we're going to end up with Moonton, who's a Chinese developer, announcing the sponsors ahead of the M2 World Championship, which is the Mobile Legends Bang Bang World Championship. So let's start off with that LCK news. Now, they have partnered with Design Studio, who is the base of the branding company behind the likes of Deliveroo. They recently did uh, in football towards the Premier Leagues. Uh, rebranding as well and they've also done the LEC they've basically announced that because they've gone into franchising they wanted a new look a new feel and so they've rebranded they've created new graphics they've created new kind of a, a new style and new ethos to the LCK and they have basically described it that they wanted it to become essentially the premier league of League of Legends so for people who don't know what the LCK is LCK is the South Korean League of Legends championship essentially it's the, the premier South Korean uh, League of Legends tournament. I do think that this is kind of just like a brand refresh, and I think it's the best time to do it, especially when you're doing franchising, and they've obviously just gone into this new model. There's a lot of kind of new formats which have been put in place as well. I know that they've upped the prize money. They've upped the minimum uh, salary. They've changed their entire format schedule, and as such, it probably warrants a rebrand as well. This is not the only rebranding which has occurred this week alone. So we've had Rogue, which have also rebranded. They've kind of, I would say that it was more of like an update. They've kind of kept their own uh, ethos. They've kind of kept their own identity, but they've just modernized the look. And I think that we're going to see a lot of that with esports organizations, I think, in 2021. And then kind of like the other big rebrand which has occurred is the LCS as well. Now, we talked about the LCK. The LCS is the American League of Legends uh, premier competition. And essentially what they have done is they've also kind of tried to change their identity a little bit, kind of separate itself, I think, again, from other tournaments. And we're starting to see that now with the LEC, with the LCK and with the LCS, kind of three different styles of what a broadcast is going to look like. And I think it's really interesting. I think it's good to kind of create three separate products, which is really cool considering it's on one game and it's on one platform. Another rebranding which took place was Dignitas. Now, I didn't mention that with the previous lot because this is a little bit more to this story than just what a rebranding is because I'm actually going to focus more on a partnership which they have done the day after their rebranding. I feel like the rebranding does need to be mentioned because it does actually play quite a big part in this story itself. So uh, Dignitas have rebranded. They've basically gone from the OWL logo, which they previously had, back to the alien, back to Digi, which was their mascot. And they've kind of wanted to make Digi a little bit more animated, bring in a lot more like personality and kind of go back, I think, what, to what the old Dignitas was, which I think a lot of people are, are in favor of, myself included. Now, after their announcement, they also partnered with Zaitara, which is a banking platform, which is basically been coming out in 2021. I don't know if it's just come out or if it's coming out. They've partnered with Dignitas as their first major strategic partnership. And because of that, Dignitas now are going to have their own um, Zaitara debit cards and the app skin, which you can actually have on the Zaitara app as well. I think that this is kind of a, a good kind of use already of Digi as the mascot, as you can see, he'll be on the debit cards. If you've not seen the debit cards, by the way, I think they look brilliant. I think it kind of makes them a little bit more marketable because by having that logo, you can see already that it's Dignitas. And I think that that is a really, really smart choice. And it's, it's for me, signifies that it's the correct choice to have done this rebranding. And this is a good partnership to start it off. Now, a story that really only broke today was BBC Sport announcing that they'll be broadcasting the Rocket League uh, Championship Series X. Now, 
I think that this is a great, great idea for BBC because I feel like Rocket League is a very marketable esport to a mainstream audience because it, one, it's very simple. Two, it's kind of got that football element. And I think a lot of people can just casually watch that esport as well. So the Champion Series will begin on January 9th. And so what they've actually done is the Rocket League Champion Series Season 10 has already been going on for, for a little bit in 2020. They've had the fall split and now they're in the winter split. This will be specifically focusing on the European regional side. I believe it's like the third re uh, regional uh, tournament in this overarching circuit. And which makes sense because it's BBC. You, you want them to kind of have the European representatives. I believe it's at like 3.30. It will be available on the BBC iPlayer, on BBC Sports app and online as well. And I think this is a huge, huge get for Rocket League as well because this drives more viewers to them. It gives them a greater opportunity. We've got the likes of Guild, Wolves, Barcelona, Team Singularity as well, who are also going to be competing in this tournament. BBC also had previously done a European Championship of Rocket League in 2020. So the fact that they've also brought this back for 2021 highlights that there was enough interest the first time. It's always about that kind of second partnership deal, I feel like, because the first partnership deal on the first broadcast could be about, oh, let's see how it does. You know, we'll give it an opportunity. It seems that that opportunity has been given, and then they've got a second one now in 2021, which I think is great. The final story of this ESI Digest is we're going to be looking at some mobile esports, which is a growing and emerging topic. But more specifically, we're going to be looking at Mobile Legends Bang Bang. More specifically than that, we're going to be talking about the M2 World Championship. So Moontown, who's the developer of Mobile Legends, has announced basically the well, unveiled the sponsors essentially for the event. And it is a it's a lot of sponsors in the Indonesia stream. Samsung have partnered with the uh, with the stream um, as a partner, and Nemo will also be the official broadcaster of the same stream as well. And then on the English side, you've got Kathy Cineplexes, C uh, Media Corp, uh, Secret Lab, SUTL, Toomey, and Singtel, who have all been confirmed as partners. It's also important to note as well, while this isn't technically to do with the story itself, that the M2 World Championships will also be offline. They'll be held behind closed door in Singapore as well. So I wonder if that kind of plays into the part of having these sponsors and these, you know, kind of new partners in. Because it is an offline tournament, I feel like it might be a little bit easier to market a little bit than having a fully online tournament. But I think it's huge to get all of these partners involved and to unveil them all basically this week, I think is is brilliant. And I look forward to see how mobile esports can continue to market itself because I think what we've seen now is we've seen that viewership is there. We've seen that participation is there. We've seen that kind of the ecosystem is getting there in the, in the sense of a competitive ecosystem. But now it's kind of getting to that next step of how much revenue can we actually get off mobile esports from a from a brand perspective, from a non-endemic kind of viewership perspective as well. And I think that's kind of been wrapping up the ESI Digest this week. There's been a lot of other stories. Um, and if you want to check the other stories, then you can go onto the Esports Insider website. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter as well. I appreciate that. If you want to follow me on Twitter as well, you can already do that. I believe it'll be in the descriptions. And yeah, hopefully everybody has a nice new year and we'll see you next week.